Oh my god. I know him. I know this guy. What guy? There's a photo of... Oh shit. Old boyfriend? Drunken bar night in a morning full of regrets. They paid for the procedure. They chose the hospital. Who? Kane Corporation. Hey folks, welcome back to Afterward Gaming. Tonight, we're back in Kane for another installment. We are here in the Birthing Lab Nexus. Uh, last time, we got into the PDT Printer Lab and found out that we can make a new PDT, which is what we need in order to open up the elevator door, uh, but we need a, a bunch of spare parts. One of them is probably right here, because look, it says mangled PDT clings to the spinal cord. Uh, so we need to somehow get this body uh, and use this PDT probably as the master off of which we're then going to make a copy so that Hadley can escape. Okay, but the first thing we wanted to do was to open this PDT. This is, I think, John Kearns. Right, Professor John Kern, pardon me. Uh, he is a very... I can't... I don't quite know the, the word for it. He's very devout... He's also very perverted, apparently, because we found his latest wife's PDA, and he has some weird hang-ups. Okay? All right, so let's just go in there. Professor John Kern, February 09. Today is a holy day. Hendry Kane himself has arrived, frozen and waiting for the great harvest to come. Soon the flesh of the immortal vessel will bring him new life. We're closer than ever, and I know it. The race has begun, and I will not allow Dr. Adams, the heretic he is, to win. No, Cain will not allow it. He knows his plan, and he knows that it ends with me. Our Leviathan is Samantha. Nothing on earth is her equal, a creature without fear. The Book of Job 41-33 Okay, February 14th. Never again will he die. Never again will he feel pain. Never again will he leave us. He will be reborn of his own duplicate flesh and not that of Adam's and his ridiculous mind transfer parlor trick. Hmm. So, I guess, he, uh, well, Dr. Adam is the guy, I think, who was in charge of where we were, where, um, where Hadley, like, woke up because he was the one maintaining it and then Hank was working for him, I think. March 13th. We're getting closer! Our next patient has undergone the new and improved genetic fusion procedure and is reacting well. The spinal cord has been killed, meaning that the dead cells will need to regenerate and reform into a functioning spine. No signs of physical rejection thus far, and cellular regeneration is slowly beginning. It should reconstruct itself overnight. What I'm concerned about is he was talking about something called Samantha, and we've definitely heard about Samantha before. Um, and it's supposed to be in here somewhere. March 14th. Our Lord has stricken us with inadequacy. We have failed yet again. This is my fault, and I must, as always, accept responsibility. This time I've added hooks to my whip, and I shall flagellate until dawn. I will elaborate on the results after I've taken time to reflect. Yeah, this is part of it. His wife was talking about the fact that he really has some weird rituals. March 15th, fusing Samantha's DNA with the patient's caused the newly regenerated spinal cord to expand drastically, forcing the vertebrae to audibly pop into even halves. Soon after the patient's immune system attacked the rogue spinal cells, which in turn retaliated by killing off all other attached nerves. In the end, the patient succumbed to asphyxiation as the new cells burned through the oxygenated blood more quickly than the lungs could produce it. Another failure, but still not a wasted body. Mm-hmm. April 8th. Praise be! I've spent the day, or at least most of it, reflecting on our Savior's brilliant plan. The pieces slide into place. Samantha, myself, and the Almighty Cain in the same facility. The planets are aligning. The end draws near. Or perhaps the beginning. Okay. May 13th. I'm glad we have finally found a use for Ralph. We have put him to a more productive task. <laughs> His blasphemous lectures about how the fungal plague is the result of poor hygiene were getting on my nerves. It is Cain's doing. The plague is his retribution for our sins. Now, <clears throat> does he think that Cain is God? Which would be strange, but okay. 
uh, May 30th. Tonight we test again. We'll be using the same procedure as before, but this time an enzyme inhibitor will be introduced to prevent excess tissue generation. We must not accept failure. We will bask in the light of Cain's restored glory. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Revelations 2.11 June 8th. Still the patient lives! However, it has exhibited some concerning symptoms. Although the spinal cord has stopped regenerating at an appropriate time, the arms and legs will occasionally twitch, or more accurately, flail. It seems that the spine has control over the connected limbs. Uh, yeah? June 11th. The patient is no longer viable. After a promising start, the regenerative tissue again expanded beyond intention. Surprisingly, the patient's removed vocal cords were reconstructed. Of course, it did not understand speech. It must have been frightened by its own inhuman screaming as it immediately tore its own throat out. After some gurgling, it regenerated within hours. Then, terrible screening, screaming and bloody extraction. A cascade of rotting tissue. The previous throats began to form a dangling, bleeding scarf as the patient continued to tear itself apart. Okay, well, we knew it was a horror game. Uh, July 1st. Oh, what an oh, that abomination! As far as Sharon can tell, Adam's unrighteous creation has wasted precious flesh in making a toy of some kind. Just like its creator, the abomination has been an unholy waste of resources. Even a name such as Hobo is an undeserved grace. It is an animal and nothing more. This sounds like he's talking about Hank. And the, the toy or whatever is the Alice Lucy Hadley thing that we found hanging. Uh, in the environmental control area. August 13th. Pestilence strikes! The fungal threat is weak now, but, some it, but soon it will spread to our food and to our bodies if it hasn't already. This is our first, and perhaps final, warning to make haste. I've traced the spores to a cargo shipment early in the year, but I have no idea how they became so virulent. Behold, with a great plague will Cain smite thy people and thy children and all thy goods. 2 Chronicles 21.14 Hold on, did they rewrite the Bible? Or did they just add books which make Cain God? Or the devil, maybe, I don't know. August 24th. I do like the amulet. I mean, I'm assuming if this is a religious thing, then the C probably stands for Cain. Uh, August 29th. The fungus is having an observable impact on the cellular regenerative process. One patient began to develop a film of what resembled reptilian scales, complete with a secondary set of eyelids. This is unacceptable. The spinal regeneration process has been mastered. Almost any tissue can now be perfectly reconstructed, but it's impossible to get definitive results within this interference. Cain, if you, tru if you truly seek rebirth, why do you hinder me so? Is this not the time? Surely there is a reason. Man, he just goes on. October 12th and September 18th. These are a little out of order, but okay. October 12th. Samantha scratched several demonic scrawls into an insignificant employee's back. I warned them not to get close to the succubus. She is the devil. Sometimes we need to make a deal with hell to get closer to heaven. All right, clearly then Cain is God. Okay. September 18th. Forgive me, Cain. I succumbed to Sharon's temptation and had a romantic dinner rather than working late as i should have done watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation the spirit is indeed welling but the flesh is weak 1 timothy 6 11 to 12 my repetitive failure has indeed had an impact on my faith i am being tested for the love of cain i shall rise above Final entry, December... Oh, no, December 4th, not final entry. Today, I noticed that my laboratory is missing several incubators. The last inventory check was several months ago, so it could have gone missing at any time. This is undoubtedly the work of Adams, but why? He doesn't need the equipment, and I can certainly spare it. Perhaps the hobo is involved. It is disconcerting at best. Hmm. Well, incubator. We haven't seen several incubators, have we? I don't think so. December 15th. Time is of the essence. Samantha's escape today is likely to be the first of many, and we will eventually run out of ways to subdue her. 
The re-engineered grubs are producing a potent gas that is driving the beast to fluster. Whether she kills us all or we find a way to kill her first, neither outcome revives Cain. I will not rest until he has returned to intervene. From this point forward, I would live for nothing else. I'm going to guess that's probably him. Right? Because he was working in this lab, then he's probably here. And then Samantha was probably in this lab as well. Because it's his, I mean, it's his lab. Uh, okay, let's just try and flip the lever. See what we get. That was nasty. Say what? Uh, organic fluid smells like an abattoir, yeah. Womb. A uterus made of flesh and machine. Uh, okay, what we wanted to do was this. Can you jam this in here? Oh, for shit's sake! Yeah, I'm with you, Hadley. I thought that would have worked. Alright, now, uh, <clears throat> give me a second here. Can you do something with this? No? No? Okay, fine. I thought maybe cut it open or something, because maybe something's inside. Okay, let's go check out that other room. Uh, and then... I mean, we're looking, in theory, we're looking for any other password because we still have, like, two other areas to open and kind of need to get in here. Maybe this is where Samantha actually is. Oh, this is glass. Okay, hold on. Uh, terminal. This terminal shows diagnostic information about the specimens, including growth charts, medical reports, and a feeding schedule. Okay. Uh, biological growth, this thing. A greenish, gaseous smog lingers around the composite mass of flesh, muscle, fiber, bone, and other organic matter. Dang. Okay. Retrieving platform. Crusted smudges of brown ichor stain the specimen tray. Glass barrier. The optically transparent polymer forms a particularly resistant barrier to the grub habitat. Yeah, these are the grubs. Okay. Sample retrieval node. It's a pneumatic delivery tube for moving samples safely between the observation laboratory and the specimen habitat. Uh, what is this? Biological growth. Okay, we read that. Atmosphere readout. This display primitively summarizes the current temperature, humidity, toxicity, and other status levels of the specimen habitat. Um, low temperature, they're sleepy? Maybe? Maybe that's what that means? I mean, it does make sense because they're not really moving around all that much. Uh, okay, grubs. All the same description, yeah. The specimens in the habitat are inert and unresponsive, perhaps in some sort of induced coma. Hmm. There is a lot of blood over here. Interesting. Is that it? Okay, let's look at the terminal then. I, 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 there's no reason for that noise. Atmospheric environmental control. Oh, that's... So, that's the place upstairs. That's where the... the You know, Hank's experiment or whatever is. Oh, okay. So let's read this. Julia Kern logged in. Okay, this is... um. This is the woman that uh, uh, didn't like her father, so John Kern's uh, wife. Okay, check in. Caligula, Attila, Mengele... Oh my god, Genghis, Mao, Nero, Vlad. Assuming these are the grubs. Incidents. 10.10 p.m. Vlad was temporarily removed from the habitat using a baited containment canister. 11.12. Caligula was exhibited has exhibited extreme aggression towards her siblings. 2.31 a.m. Mao consumed five appendages from Nero. 15A, 16A, 17B, 18B, and 19B. 3.30 a.m. I have supplied raw meat and plasma to encourage brood gas production. 4.15 a.m. Vlad produced an excess of the nootropic vapor, which resulted in low visibility in the habitat. 5.20 a.m. One cubic meter of gas was shipped to the Kern lab for the subjugation of Samantha. Vlad was returned to the habitat. Observation 1. Attila, or Attila, however you want to pronounce it, has started the metamorphic process. I've applied a metabolism inhibitor in order to inhibit stage 2 mutation. Observation 2. The grubs are responding negatively to maternal vocal calls. There is a possible rupture in the grub containment enclosure that is causing a brood gas leak that is in turn agitating Samantha. 
7.45 a.m. Habitat humidity reduced from 84 RH for the 512 hour hibernation cycle. Um, well, given that we can uh, control the habitat, let's just write that down. Not often that we get numbers 84 RH for humidity. And I believe 95 was the uh, temperature. It was in the other, the other PDA, not John's, but his wife's. Okay, personal, I'm making a note of the crew facility's password in case Boland locks me out again. Cool, crew, cross, cross, lightning bolt, triangle. Okay, so the crew facilities, nice. It's just, I saw that we can somehow interact here. Oh, God. It must smell terrible in there. Yeah, just thinking about it. We need a what? Okay, fine. We need a baited canister. I don't even have that. Um, let's leave this place then and go check out the crew quarters. And we'll go from there. I'm assuming we really do have to go in here, because I think this is where Samantha is. It's very strange that since you're just down the hall, you would have any sort of um, notation saying like, oh, we shipped XYZ amount of brood gas to Kern's lab, because they're literally next door. You know, I thought it would be like the thing, oh, we took it on the elevator and upstairs or something. Or maybe it, it's a, maybe it is a different facility, I don't know. Okay, let's see. Where's the crew facility? Crew facility. Cross, cross, lightning bolt, triangle. It worked! Perfect. This can't be how I meet my end. I have so much more inside of me. I have so much more to give to the world. <laughs> yep, this wasn't my plan either. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. You're young. You can get through this. <laughs> and then? I'm stuck. I'm stuck with a baby. It's not a life. It's not fair for either of us. There are other choices. Bingo! I did make a choice. It didn't end well. Women in my family have bad luck with babies. I'm continuing a proud family tradition. You know what I like? I just as, a, as an aside from a game design perspective, I really like that when you unlock something, there's a little, like, conversation. So that it's not just sit here silently and watch her walk to a particular door. I really like that. Especially since she then ends up right here. At the door. <laughs> so, this is where the monsters play. Still no sign of anyone? Uh, do plants count? This horrible place must have had more people around. I mean, we've seen at least evidence of more people. Evidence of at least, what, three others, I think? Or maybe if you, if you count that Buono Bueno guy. Alright, let's look around, because there's plenty of weird stuff going on here. And there is an exit. Okay. Um, holographic notice board. The menus ready to eat items include the space soup and the space special. Okay. Pretty sure that's a Spaceballs reference, but you know, what are you gonna do? Holographic eye. It's seen things you wouldn't believe. Did it see? Uh, you know what? Never mind. We, we can get into uh, Blade Runner references later. Uh, scented greenhouse. Leafy aromatic shrubs are flourishing in the otherwise somewhat unkempt terrarium. Okay. Uh, Bent stripper pole, which we can interact with, really. The steel pole is damaged, but probably still useful. Somehow. Well, if we can take it, maybe we can use it as a lever. Uh, what's this? Table and chairs. The drab, cheap, plastic mundanity of this crew lounge is but a moment's respite from the horrors unfolding around it. Uh, holographic emitter. This device manipulates electromagnetic radiation and energy particles to project a realistic virtual image. Holographic tin of Juca-Cola. Who needs sleep? Juca-Cola. It's refreshingly addictive. May cause chronic insomnia, headaches, vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, hallucinations, hypertension, gastrointestinal bleeding, peripheral neuropathy, cardiac dysthyria, congestive heart failure, toxic epidermal necro necrolis necrolysis, catastrophic hemorrhage, and death. Sounds delicious. 
and a boom box. Obviously, we need to interact with this because look, it's all green circles and basically screaming for us to interact. It's also bloody. A retro tape cassette is loaded into the deck with the label Brosif Mega Mix number 69. Yeah. Is that right? That's cool. That's a really cool effect. <laughs> okay, go ahead and turn this off, please. No? Wait, 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 wait! Ah, we didn't get the stripper pole! Uh, okay, we'll come back here in a second. I'm seeing a bunch of doorways here, and also, I think, a PDA. Uh, I love Juca Cola. Love it. They say it's made from people. Juca Cola is made of love and happiness. <laughs> and I gotta say, it's definitely horror in the style of Stasis. This one definitely has a little bit more of a sense of humor, though. Got a stripper pole. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's go back now. Oh, we have a stripper pole. Uh, just in case. Oh, we have this. A voice recorder. For whatever reason. Okay, and then... Stripper pole. The politically correct term is exercise pole. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's look around. Doorway. Blood streaks the threshold like a red carpet. Hmm? Passageway that we can't actually exit through. That's not ominous at all. Locked crew quarters. The name on the hologram reads Awesome Danny Boland. Yeah, okay. Locked crew quarters. It's an empty apartment. Locked crew quarters. This apartment belongs to Dr. S. Adams. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm assuming that this means... Wait, inclined. An incredible force has bent the platform. Oh, we can't go here because obviously fire, right? This is the only way up here. This is the only way in. Twisted wreck of elevator, smashed glass and scrap metal, and not much else. Smoldering debris. The steel wreckage radiates an immense amount of heat. The air above it, hazy and distorted. Yeah, so we can... I mean, hopefully this place has, like, a fire extinguisher or something. This is locked... This, this apartment belongs to Cindy Milan. Really? Milan is quite a ignoble name. For those who played Stasis. Uh, Lock crew quarters. There's no name on the holographic display up here. Okay, fine. Overgrown gardens. A flourishing extravagance of verdant flora, unconcerned by the catastrophe around it. Cool. Dense oxygen gardens. The facility uses these hydroponic houses as a natural, unmechanical method of replenishing its oxygen supplies. Ripped open door. Even the frame and the walls are buckled and broken, as if by some furious preternatural force. And then there's a PDA. The private journal has been knocked to the floor. And that's it. All right, Hadley. Uh, floor. Layers of ash on the floor resemble a thick carpet. Yeah, let's go through here, because that's inviting. Oh, terribly decorated. Nice. Um, what do we got? We got a PDA. We've got a discard. A small light illuminates the device on the floor. Discarded equipment. Okay, fine. Blood-covered sheets. The blood-sodden sheets have dried like a scab over the bunk. Okay. Scattered picture frame. Shattered picture frame. It's a portrait of an old man in a white laboratory coat. Vintage photographs. Sterile polyester vignettes of some other place, some other time. Mangled electronic safe. It looks like the door has been chewed off its hinges. Sparks radio. The damaged radio blares a static tune. Uh-huh. Personal terminal. Burned out circuitry smolders behind the smashed screen. And romance novels. Titles like Bride of the Omniverse, The Cosmonaut's Mistress, and An Interstellar Scandal are still legible through the blots of gore. Hmm. Uh, okay, well, first things first. Let's go check out what this is. PDT. And it looks unused. 
How do you know? No blood on it. And it doesn't smell like rotting meat. Good thing to know. Um, and it's an empty PDT. That's one of the things we have to find. Good. Good. We'll look at the PDA in a second. What's with the mangled safe? Oh my god. I know him. I know this guy. What guy? There's a photo of... Oh, shit. Old boyfriend? Drunken bar night in a morning full of regrets. They paid for the procedure. They chose the hospital. Who? Kane Corporation. All right, that's pretty sinister. Um, does he go out and, like, find marks? Interesting. Wait, wait, what? We picked up the photo. A photograph signed, Love Joseph. It also furnishes a lipstick kiss and a, sus and a suspect stain in the corner. Oh. Look at this again. Anything else? Anything else? there anything else? No. Maybe there was something in the safe? No. Okay, fine. Exit. Um, so this isn't Joe. I'm assuming this isn't Joseph's room. Assuming this is like somebody else's room. Let's see whose PDA we got here. Julia Kern. Uh, holy moly. Okay. Daddy's anxious. He won't admit it, but I think the idea of having Kane and Stasis here bothers him. He knows his work is coming along slowly. He's scared to fail in his holy light, but knows that he will. Poor Daddy. Oh, so she and this Joseph Bueno guy or whatever. Uh, okay, fine. Julia Kern, March 14th. Oh, that's Sharon. I'm sure it's her temptation that is leading my daddy to failure. She keeps him from punishing himself like he should. She scolds me for calling him daddy because she thinks I'm too old. Excuse me, but I was raised with a little thing called values. Besides, she wants me to call her mom. Double standards, right? March 23rd. Joseph is so special. Do you ever feel like something is just meant to be? It's such a tacky feeling to describe, but it's true. It's cliche for a reason. How can you have nostalgia over someone you just saw a couple of minutes ago? I don't know, but it's the best feeling in the world. Babysitting Samantha's brood is easier when I know I can go see him afterward. April 4th. Ugh. Another day, another load of brood gas harvested. I understand that we needed to keep Samantha calm, but it's such a pain to watch over her oversized maggots. Of course, why bother with the gas when we can just stick Sharon in there to calm her down just as well? They look about the same anyway. <laughs> Did I mention how much I hate working with this bitch? It is bad enough that she is screwing my daddy, but I have to work with her every single fucking day. April 5th. Time to vent. I've really been thinking about how Samantha only lets Sharon handle her, and it pisses me off to no end. Joseph could cheat on me and I'd still be angrier about Sharon and her stupid lopsided face. I wish that witch would stop trying to micromanage my family. May 1st. The 1st of May is always so romantic. Spring is here. I mean, it probably is somewhere or other. There aren't really seasons here. Sometimes the atmospheric controls break and tries to either freeze or burn us to death, though. That counts as seasons, I think. Okay. June 8th. It's a tough life. Nothing can ever just be okay, you know? If somebody isn't sick, you can bet they're tired or hungry or stressed out. There's nowhere I'd rather be, though. Most people don't get to live with their daddy forever, much less a five-minute walk from their perfect boyfriend. Plus, I'm working for, for a righteous cause. It's all worth it. August 14th. Ew, fungus. They say it's all inside the ventilation system, and now it's starting to settle on the outside of the vents. Maybe that's why everyone's got food poisoning? How long has this stuff been around? It smells like old feet. September 9th. Work's getting even harder for Daddy now that this fungus is everywhere. I've just a thing, though. I can make sure Dr. Adams doesn't use this as an opportunity to get ahead. Tonight, I'll level the playing field. Joseph likes to bring me into Adam's workspace when we get really... romantic. I'm sure he won't notice if some information gets deleted, right? Sharon says her face is so disfigured because she had a stroke and lost control of the muscles that are supposed to hold the right side of it together. I'd have a stroke too if I had to live knowing that I was such a helpless idiot. Except, I'll do the right thing and just off myself so that the rest of the gene pool didn't have to deal with me. October 23rd. It's been a really long time since Daddy's told me a story about Mommy. 
When I was a teenager, he put me to sleep every night with a story about the two of them before I was born and how happy they were. He denies it, but I think her death has a lot to do with the decision to practice medicine. Now though, he insists that it was his calling from Cain since he was a child and that mommy was just an insignificant cog in the machine of life. I understand. Everyone copes differently. December 11th. Dr. Adams has done it. He's mapped Cain's mind into a new host. No rejection. This isn't how it's supposed to happen. Daddy just needed more time. I've rewritten the results and updated the ARM computer with Joseph's login details, and I'm not sure how long I can keep this up. Kane, help us all. Joseph struck me hard across the face this de December 12th. Doesn't he know that I've been sabotaging their research? He called me Grublina while he ravaged me with some over-the-knee spanking and whips, whips lightly across my back. Mm. Does he still love me? Oh, I know he does. December the 15th. It's a blessing from Kane. Samantha broke free today and killed five security guards. Why is this good? I managed to sneak over to Ralph during the commotion and print a PDT. I used Joseph's high-level security clearance details. Also managed to grab a blank one. I'll save it for a rainy day. December 17th. Daddy hasn't slept in three whole days. He barely eats. And what has Sharon done? She's distracted him. He needs to focus on Kane. Maybe it's time I finally give her what she deserves. Joseph has been cold toward me despite me submitting to another beating and some light strangulation. Jesus. December 19th. Bueno and I are over. The bastard. He admitted to me that Adams paid him earlier this year to fuck a young girl. I was... <laughs> was she prettier than me? Does she believe that, that pain is pleasure? No. No, this cannot continue. Why do I think that this is probably me? Or, well, Hadley. December 23rd. I'll lure Sharon over to Samantha's cell and use Joseph's PDT to release Samantha on her. I just need a little human flesh to get the broodlings buzzing, and Samantha will do the rest. With the security thinned after the incident, nobody will ever find out. Even if they do find out, figure it out, Joseph will get the blame. Last entry, December 25th. It's always around Christmas. This is it. The power has just turned off for maintenance or something. I decided to take care of that Sharon, and then I can set things straight for Daddy. Praise be to Cain. Praise be to Cain. Praise be to Cain. Praise be to Cain. Okay. Uh, well, let's exit this room because it's freaky as all get out. Um. All right. So, with all that said, I think let's call it here. Next time we come back, we will go and check out whether we can use this, uh, God, where is it? Yeah, the stripper pole as uh, the other lever. Maybe we have to combine it again with something else, but we'll figure that out. We'll probably maybe use the Omni tool to screw it in place or something. Uh, anyway, that's our order of business for the, next, uh, for the next episode. We also have to figure out a way of putting out this fire so that we can go up here. And maybe there's a way to unlock these doors. I don't know, but we definitely have to go up here because, look, there's a PDA we got to read. Okay? Um, with that all said, if you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. If you guys have thoughts, if you think I overlooked something, if you have ideas on what's going on, uh, by all means, leave a comment. Everything's welcome. And in any case, I'll see you all next time. Better,